Ephesians chapter 1 is a highly contested passage because it brings up the difficult doctrine of predestination. Predestination is not about God picking and choosing who will and won't be saved before they're even born. The word is predestination, which simply means a destination is set beforehand. The question is, whose destination is set beforehand? Those unconditionally chosen before creation for reasons beyond their control? Or those who place their faith in Christ? If we go back to the text and look at verse 1, we see that Paul is addressing the saints who are in Christ Jesus, the faithful in him. In fact, the theme of being in him is repeated over 10 times in just the first 13 verses. So who are those chosen in him? Verse 1 tells us, the saints, the faithful in Christ Jesus. And verse 4 says, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Does the Apostle Paul mean that God has chosen individuals before they were born to be placed in him so as to be made holy and blameless? Or does he simply mean that God has chosen whoever is in him by faith to be holy and blameless? So when Paul says he chose us in him, who is he talking about? Clearly, the faithful in Christ from verse 1. And what has he chosen for the faithful in Christ to become? To become holy and blameless in his sight. And later in verse 11, he goes on to write, In him... We were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Does this passage mean God has predetermined certain individuals to believe? Or has God chosen believing individuals for a predetermined end? So looking at the verse again, in him we were also chosen. Who is we? Again, verse 1 tells us, the faithful in Christ. So the faithful in Christ were chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything. Let me explain the difference by way of analogy. Suppose you had two baseball teams there in your hometown, one coached by Coach Calvin and the other by Coach Hobbs. On Coach Calvin's team, he would pick, choose, and compel each of the team members to join his team. Whereas Coach Hobbs made an invitation that whosoever would could come and join his team. Before the season even begins, both coaches promise that their team will be well conditioned and trained to play baseball. So both coaches, for both teams, have decided before the season even begins the end goal or what the destination is for each of their team members they will be trained and conditioned to play baseball. Put another way, the coach predestined his team to be conformed into the image of good, well-trained baseball players. So in the mind of the Apostle Paul, which of these two coaches, both of which have a predetermined end, would best represent the mind of God when he makes his choices with regard to who is on his team. This passage is not about God predetermining which individuals will be in Christ and which ones won't. It is about God predetermining what will become of those who are in Christ through faith. In other words, it isn't about which one will be on the team and which ones won't. It is about what will happen to those who join his team through faith. Remember, predestination isn't about God causing some to believe while passing by the rest. It is about the destination God has set for those who are in Him. The destination of those in Him is set beforehand. That is predestination. So the major question is how does one come to be in Him? After all, it is in Him that we have all the blessings listed here in this passage.
the blessings of being made holy, the blessing of being adopted, the blessing of redemption, the blessing of forgiveness. All destinations that God has set beforehand for those who are in Christ through faith. So the question again is how does one come to be in Christ? And when are they placed in him? Verse 13 tells us plainly, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So when does Paul say you were marked in him? When you heard the message of truth and believed. Again, this passage is not about God predetermining which individuals will be in Christ and which ones won't. It is about God predetermining what will become of those who are in Christ through faith. Let me give one more analogy to help illustrate this perspective. An airline may decide beforehand the destination of a plane to fly from Dallas to Chicago tomorrow at noon, but not necessarily determine who will or won't get on that airplane. So too, God can decide beforehand that whosoever is in Christ will be made holy and blameless without necessarily determining who will or won't trust in Christ. Likewise, God may decide beforehand that whoever is in Christ by faith will be adopted. Just as Romans 8.23 says, Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. We eagerly await the adoption that God has promised for all who are in Christ Jesus. I have a hope for my adoption being completed because God has predestined beforehand what will come of anyone who puts their faith in him. The text says that God has determined beforehand that, quote, the faithful in Christ, verse 1, will become, quote, holy and blameless, verse 4, and will be adopted, verse 5. Again, this is not about God deciding beforehand who will or won't put their faith in him. It is about what God has decided will become of all who are in him through faith. So, in the same way that Coach Hobbs has predestined or predetermined what will become of everyone who joins his team, so too God has predetermined what will become of everyone who joins his team through faith. And just as the airline has predetermined the destination of all those who board the plane, so too God has determined beforehand the destination of all of those who enter Christ through faith. But we must not lose the fact that it's your responsibility to get on board. It is your responsibility to join the team. It is your responsibility to put your trust in Christ. And the reason it is your responsibility is because you have the ability to respond. The ability to respond to God's gracious, Holy Spirit wrought truth sent calling us all to repent and believe in him. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. It is your responsibility to believe and to confess your sins. Then and only then will you be included in him. Paul said to Timothy, this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. As Paul said in Romans 10.9, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. My prayer is that today you will believe in him. Remember to like and share this video, and it really helps if you subscribe by clicking on the logo in the bottom right corner. And if you can support us, go to soteriology101.com and click on the support link in the top right corner. 
If you want to learn about how to get a higher education, click on the classroom link and learn more about Trinity Seminary.